Hello everyone, welcome back to Museum Madness. I apologize for my absence. I did have some other things that I needed to attend to, and uh, in the last episode, if I remember correctly, we cleared out another couple of exhibits and we're getting down towards the end of the museum. Yes, we cleared out the first of our world history exhibits as well as the last of our uh, natural sciences exhibit, I suppose you could call them. In this episode, we're going to be going back into history through, I guess, the development of writing is next. Let's go. Ah, yes, ancient writing. Of course, being a history nut, this is uh, very interesting for me, but uh, I'm sure that a lot of you out there aren't going to want to be bogged down by everything that's going on. Let's go ahead and talk to Mick and get the quick 411. Hmm. Let's see, so you have to help young scribe translate something. But to translate the hieroglyphics, we have to translate Egyptian text, or hieroglyphics, pictographs, whatever you want to call them, into Roman alphabets, which is basically what we use today. So we have a couple people we can talk to. Let's talk to this person first. So this is the teacher, or a guard, perhaps, and, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's talk to this fellow. So, he's been charged with trying to translate the... Well, no, in, for fin with finishing the inscription, but, uh... Yeah. He went to a party instead. Sounds like a college student more than anything else. So, even though we're not really a scribe or a translator, we gonna have to try to help him out. Of course, it's all in hieroglyphics, so it's really Greek to us at this point, so. What's this guy got to say over here? He's doing something. Looks like he's making papyrus. Because in these days, Egyptians, the manufactured paper that we have today wasn't available, so they had to make their own out of plants which is called papyrus. And we're going to be able to make some by following the instructions. Just sort of like the gunpowder thing that we had to do in the American Revolution exhibit. All right, so there's an instructions here on the tree. So we have to cut something, put it together, then hammer it out, and then smooth it with a rock. All right, I think we can do that. Let's take a look. So first, we have a pocket knife that we can use to cut this. As I've said before, the pocket knife is the most useful of all of the items that you have in this game. Let me see now. Now we have to put something on top of the strands to allow us to beat it down to get it flat. And have it all sort of smashed together. And then to smooth it out, we have to run a stone across it. It's kind of like if you've ever taken apart, like, a, the wrapper of a Hershey's Kiss or a piece of gum or something and tried to smooth it out to get all of the wrinkles out. It's kind of like that. And, yeah. That gets us a piece of a sheet of papyrus. And, yeah, like the kid alludes to, it was really hard to make paper in these days, which makes it pretty valuable stuff. So, yeah, now we have an empty papyrus scroll. We should be able to use this for something. Right, Mick? Any advice? We'll need writing implements to copy their alphabets. Hmm. Well, anything else you've got to say? Ah, so it was Greek to us. So this is basically like the Rosetta Stone, where the top is Egyptian hieroglyphics, and then Greek letters are in the middle, and the Roman uh, uh, symbols are on the bottom. And they all say the same thing, which basically should allow us to figure it out if we can copy down the Roman alphabet. So let's go see what we can find in these other rooms. 
Uh oh. This is Greek area of the, the exhibit apparently, and somebody just decided to smash these uh, lovely Greek urns. Looks like uh, we've got another puzzle to do, folks. Yet another puzzle. Of course, this one isn't... Well, I wouldn't say it's not so bad. It is difficult because the pottery is such a weird shape. There's so many interlocking parts, but... At the same time, it's a lot more distinct than some of the other puzzles we've had to deal with, so... There is that. It's just a matter of getting the proper dimensions for the, po for the pottery, and then finding pieces uh, where they fit, so... There we go. Some, uh, Greek pottery. Yeah, that's not gonna help us, though. There's no nothing that'll help us translate the Greek alphabet there. Let's try this other one, see if this helps us at all. Okay. So if we can do this, focus on this band on the cross the top first. That should... Oh, this is a wide one. This must be a bowl or something. That should get us a nice starting point. There we go. My sprite frickling, frick, there. Sprite flickering is especially bad in this part. I'm not sure exactly why, but oh well. Nothing I can do about it. Sorry, folks. Put that in. And then this one. Yes, uh, puzzles. I have said before that this game retire it requires far too many puzzles to finish and not enough actual education. I mean, there are some exhibits that do well with the history, like the whole first part of this exhibit with, with the papyrus. But this one, having to rely on puzzles to solve the game isn't exactly educational. Yep, so... Obviously, we're not... Uh, equipped to copy this down yet, but... Yeah, this is a picture of a student copying down the Greek alphabet onto a scroll. Something we may find useful. See what else is going on. I don't know. This looks like a schoolroom the teacher just pieced out. What's going on? Yeah, we're not exactly a student. Ah, so they're learning the Latin alphabet. What have you got to say? Okay. Oh, and this teacher's back. Great, now we're caught. So this part is very easy to get stuck at because it's hard to figure out what to do next. It doesn't look like much is happening, but uh, obviously he keeps showing up, his, he keeps holding up his tablet and what we have to do is we have to copy down what's on it. that does it. Mick, help me out here. So, yeah, we have to copy his information down. But, here, try that. Nope. Not as useful as, as it ever is. Um, hmm.
Let's just leave. Whatever. Oh yeah, now I remember. Yeah, because you can't use the pen that you already have. Even though it's perfectly functional, you have to come here and talk to this fellow. And get a writing implement from him instead. Sure, we can stand to learn about the Chinese alphabet. Why not? Oh, but we have to do a puzzle first. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so we have to, uh... Play a little guessing game. Now... The... Some of these... These symbols... As he said... They... Hmm. They, they usually mean about... Prox two of them match. Of each one. There are two that match each time. But our job is to figure out which match which. If I recall correctly, the simpler ones are the ones that are the old way, and the, the more complex ones are the ones that are the new ones. See, there we are. Now, if I can only just remember... And then, perhaps this one here? No. Uh, maybe this one? There we are. Maybe we switch these around then? There we go. And then these. It's a little incongruous, it's a little difficult to figure out, but, you know, trial and error. Like I said, most of the puzzles in this game can be solved with simple trial and error, because there's no penalty for failing. And he gives us a pen and ink. Which, as the kid noted, we already have a pen, but apparently this one works better. I don't know. What, I don't know. Whatever. Okay, so now that we're, we have a new pen, we can use it to copy down on. There we go. We can use it to copy down the information from the tablets onto the scroll. Alright, and that gives us... I believe this is the Latin alphabet, and this is their Roman equivalent. If I recall correctly, I could be wrong about that. And, of course, he says that if we have Papyrus instead of a slate, we're too advanced for his class, and he dismisses us. It allows us to go and do something else. Now, can we copy down the Greek as well? No. Um... No, that's not what I have to do. There we go. We copy the Greek alphabet onto the papyrus. And of course, he makes a joke about how it was Greek to him. I made that joke first, kid. Don't try to steal my thunder. Hmm. We should be able to use this to translate the hieroglyphics now. We have the Roman alphabet, the Latin alphabet, and the Greek alphabet copied down. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, we already know that. Let's, uh. Let's take a look. Let's see what we got. All right. So as Mick says, there's some hieroglyphics that stand for individual words or ideas, and others that are just individual sounds, like our alphabet. And these, conveniently enough, are those same things that stand for individual sounds. And basically, what we have to do is we have to take the Greek and Roman equivalents and put them here on the slate so that we can, you know, copy that down properly. I think, is this, yeah, this must be the Greek letter. This must be Greek letters. Or at least some form, some simplified form of the Greek 
like letters. Um, let's see. Yeah, so this is basically just, this is really just busy work, but after you get to a certain point, you kind of start to guess what the next letter is. If you, um, it's kind of like Wheel of Fortune that way, where you can kind of begin to guess what the next letter is because you've seen most of the rest of the word filled in. I do like that their D is a triangle, though. That's kind of cool. Let me see. N. O. Whoops. That's an O. Uh, T. Scribe, do not be. Let me see. What's this one here? I. D. Idle. I bet it's idle. This next one is an E. Yep, it is idle. Alright, scribe, do not be idle. I can't tell if that's really bad grammar or if that's just a painfully bad attempt at trying to make something sound vaguely old-fashioned. All right, so yeah, we've done. We're done here. All right, what's next? Let's see. Knights, Heraldry, and Jousting. Luck-based mission. Let's go. I do like the music here, though. It's a unique jingle, I believe, if I, my memory serves me. Though I have been wrong on that account before. So this is the Jousting Tournament. And what's going on, Mick? Let, uh, fill me in. So the tournament has to be completed to restore the exhibit. So the king, this is the king's champion here, and he will fight everyone until he's bested by another knight. We have to find a knight who's stronger than the champion. The knight's shield tells his strength. You must find a knight with a shield that is stronger than the champions to beat him. I don't know why that is, but, uh, whatever. Let's go ahead and move on. And this is what I mean that this is this is the one puzzle in this game that you really can't solve anyway except through trial and error. Let's talk to the uh, squire here. I think this is a squire. Alright, so... We have to try to cre create a coat of arms that's stronger than the one of the knights who's the king's champion. How do we do that? We have to pick the elements, two sides of the shield, as well as the animal crest figure out what is the strongest combination which is completely randomized and luck based so this is as good a combination as any to start out with we'll just go with it can we go with it can we no, no? yes maybe so so yeah Basically, there are several different animals and different poses that you can put on there. Dolphins, uh, boars, dragons, unicorns, horses, and a lion. And then you also have several different colors to choose from for the different hemispheres of the shield. After you pick one... Can I just... Can I, can I pick one? Can I pick... Can I pick... And I said this is my... Uh. Okay. Then you talk to the Herald here. And he'll summon the knight whose shield matches what you just put on. Conveniently, in all of the possible combinations, each have a corresponding knight. Which is kind of weird. But anyway. After you finish that, your chosen knight will then do battle with the king's knight. 
You can see the King's Knight shield here on the left, and whoops, and our knight's shield here on the right. Let's click on the Squire back here and have him begin the match. Um, did we just win? Okay, I'm a little stunned. Yeah, definitely, kid. See, that was actually kind of cool because I didn't expect to get that right in more than maybe a half dozen tries. It, you know, like I said, it's completely luck-based and randomized. The King's Knight's crest and shield design is randomized on every playthrough. No, there's not a problem, Mick. I'm just explaining to the people here exactly what just happened. And... Basically, that was complete luck. But I'll take it. Anyway. Next time, on Museum Madness, we finish up the last two exhibits in the main hall. See you guys then.